Hey guys, Clumsy here, and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator. I know it's super dark. Very early morning departure. The sun is starting to peek out from there though, so we should have a nice sunrise once we depart from this airport. We're currently at uh, the Tri State, Huntington Tri State Airport. Don't ask me where it is exactly, but. We do have a flight plan set. We don't have that sim today though because I started using Sim Toolkit Pro. I just started checking it out. It is very nice. This is what you can see on the screen right now. It has VAT sim integration in the sense that you can see the VAT sim airplanes, the online uh, players in VAT sim. And you all can also see the ATC coverage and uh, you can merge that with the flight plan that you set. And right now, our flight plan is smack in the middle of uncovered territory. So, no vaccine today, but that's fine because I wanted to take the time to hand fly anyway. You might have seen in the video yesterday that, uh, yeah, I'm starting to tinker with the sensitivity settings. Minus 25% seems like the perfect balance for me. I hope. It's correct though, so we'll test it out if I can still hand fly this thing. One tip though, make sure you always test your flight controls, that they are free and correct. And that's what they do in real life, but this is something we need to do also in the sim. Because technically that like instantiates or initiates the, uh, the controls for flight sim. Otherwise, if you do that, if you pitch up the first time when you're taking off, Sometimes flat, flight sim is able to interpret that wrongly. So you get that weird stalling or sudden movement. So initiate your controls before you do anything, before you even get started. It's good practice also for real life, I imagine. Anyway, let's start up the plane. I will share details with you in a bit. Starter. I'm still not sure where it's coming from. I didn't change any controls. But since the last patch, you can see, if I move this to cutoff, normally it should be automatically at cutoff. It would automatically move to low idle like so, without me moving anything. It seems like something they programmed. Maybe a lot of people were having problems when they mo weren't moving to low idle, but I don't like it. Some kind of automation that I don't like. Like it manual. Oh, you can see the reflections in there. That is beautiful. Also, FPS in this area, not bad at all. I think we're at around 50. Yeah, 50. Looking pretty good. Bit uh, bottlenecked by the avionics, but overall, we're okay. Are we in low idle, flight idle now? Yes, we are. Our shell separator bleeds on, nav lights on. Box boost pump to auto. Fuel selector is in auto automatically. By default, looks good there. Flash the taxi lights to let the marshaller know that we are on our way. Isn't that how it works? Departing via runway 12th day. Since we're not on any network, let's just announce it. Huntington traffic, TBM 6389er Delta, taxiing runway 12 via Echo Alpha something along those lines Huntington traffic yeah something like that <laughs> Ooh, looks like some early birds here as well inertial separate is on I'll go through the actual flight plan later guys for now just hang tight take off flaps are set let's get on the taxiway here if I can find it I think it's this one Let's go straight from there. Test my controls again, make sure I didn't miss anything. Let's change my active nav to FMS. So unfortunately we won't have VATSIM coverage. But uh, yeah, we'll get to enjoy the flight nonetheless. Let's close that out. Sim Toolkit Pro looks like a pretty promising tool. We'll tinker with that more as we go. So let's go flight director, heading mode, slow down here a bit, 
and it's going to be a runway one two so stop here we'll have to back taxi a bit but let me set the heading first 118 good 118 on the heading landing lights are on okay Huntington traffic TBM 638 Nanner Delta back taxiing runway 12 Huntington traffic thank you for the tips by the way guys I always learn something new thanks to you thanks to your guidance your comments and your very gentle way of correcting me so thank you for not being harsh <laughs> I do tend to miss a lot of things so really appreciate it that you take the time to not hurt my feelings but still teach me <laughs> <laughs> that takes extra effort. So thanks for that. 3012 is the altimeter. I also, by the way, turned on live traffic again. And that's especially see, especially useful. Since we're not uh, on VATSIM at the moment. So at least we get to see some other planes. And we will be flying into a Glass Bravo airport today. To Detroit Metro. I think it's a very famous airport. Of course, I'm not familiar with it myself, but sure looks like a big one. We'll brief that later as we go. Oh, loving the lights here. You can see the nav lights there, the green one just emanating from the wing very subtly. Runway 1-2, that's correct. Huntington traffic, TBM 638, Nanner Delta. Taking off runway 1-2 to the northeast Huntington traffic all right let's set turn on the heaters and off we go trims are okay takeoff power is set little bit of wind coming from the left left aileron just a bit control Maintain center line with the rudder pedals. 90 knots. Rotate. Just very, very subtly. Oh, 25. Negative 25% sensitivity. Seems like it's the perfect thing. Positive rate. Tap the brakes. Gear up. Looking good. Pitch down just a bit. Pitch down so we get 115 knots on the speed. That looks pretty good to me. Maintain runway heading. Come on, pitch down, pitch down. Oh, that is beautiful, guys. There we go, 115 knots. Flaps up. And we have to pitch a bit up to counteract that tendency for the plane to pitch down when you set your flaps up. Okay. All good. Start turning. Your damper is on as well, so I can let my feet off the rudder pedals. Try to maintain this 10 degree pitch up. And flying this just to get reacquainted with how the new sensitivity feel is. And thanks for the comments, by the way. A lot of people seem to be having problems, the same as I am is beautiful oh my goodness where's the airport we departed from you guys see it should be on our left there there it is there it is huntington tri-state ferguson airport beautiful all right let's get on this trajectory to intercept the flight plan still cannot get over the reflections on the pfd on the side the window there that just looks so cool I think we're good here. No clouds, minimal clouds. Actually, no clouds in this area at all. Inertial separator can go off. Still hand flying. And loving every bit of it. Beautiful. So now that I've gone back to single monitor setup, I'm really enjoying the additional real estate space that I'm getting in terms of utilities 
I have little nav map on my right monitor and because it's the same size this monitor is the same size as my main monitor 27 inch 1440 resolution little nav map is so huge now compared to how it was before and then on the left I have navigraph and then all the other stuff like OBS for recording other utilities so all the bells and whistles beautiful cannot wait for the sunrise so yeah learning how to hand fly again it's a good practice good exercise climbing is very easy when it comes to hand flying just have to make sure to either maintain that pitch or maintain that airspeed depending on what you are preferring Oh, you can actually see the planes. Yeah, I'm using live traffic so you can see the planes there on the radar at least. On the, NF and the MFD. Maybe we'll get to see some. Should be much easier to see. Oh, there you go. The sun is starting to peek out the horizon. By the way, I've got a lot of people asking about my graphic settings. I'm not quite ready to share it yet. It's mostly ultra, but I did some tweaks here and there. I found some articles in the flight sim forums. They're very useful. Once I'm ready, I'll share it. I'll include it in the mods list. So you guys can refer to it as well. Uh, there is a full comprehensive article that someone made. I forgot his name. But it's very useful. Sink the heading there. And I've been using that to start off and then tweak based on my preferences and based on my system. So as with everything, the settings, they won't apply to everybody. You'll have to really mix and match for your own. But for now, they're a good start. They are a good start. Oh, I think I saw a plane. One sec. Trying to keep looking at it. No, it's gone. Because we have two planes on our 2 o'clock. Oh, there it is. You guys see? There, where my mouse is. There, just flickering. The nav lights and the strobes showing there. You see? Let me zoom in. Come on, show yourself. Oh, they're a bit camera shy. Oh man, that sucks. But when I spot someone, I'll let you know again. 10,700 should be safe to turn off our landing lights. Good. Continue the climb. And now I can push on the throttle more. Still hand flying, still hand flying. And yeah, I guess it's a blessing in disguise. We don't have Vatim right now, so I can focus on hand flying and talking with you guys. Vatim is super cool for immersion, but we don't have much quality time when that happens, right? Because I, I'm too preoccupied with staying on top of things and uh, making sure I don't miss any of the communications from Vatim. For sure we'll go back there again though, but for now, just enjoy the view guys. Just enjoy the view. So we're climbing to 30,000 feet here. Flight level 300. Let's have a look outside. Beautiful. Still can't spot any planes though. Anyway, I'll keep on looking. Oh, there it is. There it is. Finally, someone who is close enough. You see, guys? The blinking lights. Uh, finally. It's been so long since I've, so I've seen uh, an airborne plane. I've been turning them off for the longest time because um, I was scared that they will eat up my CPU. And I am limited by my main thread already, so I didn't want to add any load. But just to try it out... I enabled live traffic, not uh, AI traffic, well AI traffic but live traffic, not the normally generated ones, which makes it safe I think, because the bug with the CPU bug, I think it's only there if you use the non-live traffic, you know, when the, the sim decides where to spawn the planes and stuff like that. With live traffic, I think it is not present. So for those who are not familiar, there was a bug, or there is a bug, I think, still there. That when you have AI planes enabled, 
the AI planes, the airborne planes, don't actually get, um, they don't disappear. Even if they're far from you, even if, if you leave the area, they're still there. So in terms of CPU, in terms of PC if, uh, consumption on the resources, they're still consuming your resources even if they're nowhere near you anymore. And that makes it very inefficient. That makes it very heavy and causes a lot of crashes. With live traffic, I don't think that's a problem, but we will see shortly as we progress with our flight if we'll get some problems. Yeah, so far, so good. Just, this, the, just the usual limited uh, thread on the CPU. One thing we can do to uh, minimize the lag is to go to map here, map detail, make it at least like that. That should help a bit because the G3000 mod does have a lot of details but it kind of lowers the FPS as well. You know what, let's do a test there if that's true. Alright, so let's have a look. So I'm at around 52 FPS. Doesn't seem like anything's bottlenecking. CPU is not full and none of the threads are 100%. My GPU is not 100% either, not even 90. So not sure where the bottleneck is coming from, but it's somewhere there. And if you look, so 48, 50, if I make the map fully detailed again, let's see. Oh, it's the same. Same banana. But if I add back the cities, I think that's where the problem was before. I'm not sure if that got fixed already. Oh, 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 oh. 48. 40. Yeah, we lost like 2, 3 FPS. Oh, that. And it stutters from time to time. So yeah, I don't like enabling those cities. With the recent update, I think that's been optimized a bit. But still, I think it's a bit of an FPS hit, so I, I'd rather not. Like moving to standard barrow here. Standard altimeter. So yes, really looking forward to update 6. We will do some test flights again after the update because when I watch the Q&A episode from the developers from Asobo and from Microsoft, they mentioned that with update 6, they will be introducing a large CPU optimization logic. So uh, those who are always limited by the main thread should no longer, well, should have much better performance is what I should say. So the, if you have a powerful GPU and uh, if you look at developer mode at the show FPS, the one I showed before, you're always, it's always saying limited by main thread then you know what i'll show you let's do, go a bit technical here for those who are not familiar general developers developer mode apply and you'll get this window here at the top and then you can have options display fps you see that there all right so now we can see what's happening interestingly enough yeah, okay, so it's flickering between limited by main thread and limited by GPU. Now, what I think that means, because the GPU is not really pushing, it's only at 80%, so it, it can do more, but I think the GPU can never be faster than the CPU in terms of frame time. So the main thread is at, like, let's say, 14 milliseconds. The GPU can't be faster than that because it it waits for the instructions from the CPU. So you won't see it faster. So when you're flickering like this, I'm imagining it's the main thread that's holding you back. Because like before, in my GTX 1070, before I upgraded to the 3080, it would always be saying limited by GPU and it wouldn't flicker around. Now it's flickering, so I'm guessing the GPU is doing everything it can. It's waiting for the CPU to give instructions. And so it's matching the speed of the main thread. I guess that's how we read that. So with update 6... Oh, look at that! It's actually a player? or No, I think it's a, an aircraft. 
yeah i have this mod ui mod you can check it in the mods list it shows you the name plates but it changes the name plates so it's less intrusive it's more subtle there's a way to remove that i think there is a hotkey for it i think it's f12 yeah f12 to remove the plates f11 to bring it back f12 to remove it which is pretty handy but yeah if you're if you're on steam <laughs> F12 is your screenshot key. So it's not very functional for you. But I think there's an option to change the, de the default keys. Just look in the mods list. Look for UI mod. It comes with many different um, tweaks. That's also where I got the those who were asking. Like I don't have tooltips anymore. But if I hold the alt key here then the two tips go back and they're a bit transparent so like normally it wouldn't be shown but if i'm at a loss if i'm not familiar with the aircraft and i need some help i can hold out and they, they will get back so it's perfect i really like this mod right, let's continue climbing here so yeah limited by main thread limited by gpu i don't actually know why because the cpu is only at 70 percent yeah none of them are getting maxed out so i guess it's something with the optimizations but i mean 51 fps is not a big deal right it's not a problem i guess at this point you'd want to instead increase your image quality instead of um focusing on increasing fps maybe now it's time to increase the image quality although to be fair it does help a lot flying when you have smooth frame rate it's much easier to control the plane because you don't have any input lag when you move your yoke when you do any adjustments on your flight controls you see it reflected immediately in the sim because the frame rate is smooth so nice to see planes in the air and i guess flying at night is perfect in this way so we get to appreciate them more because if it was daytime i doubt we would have seen them oh losing power here good thing i noticed sorry about that have to push on the throttle so we get back our power beautiful right so i think we're good here guys i'll uh, pause the video here i'll be back with you when something comes up maybe the sun comes up and uh we'll appreciate some sights catch you guys in a bit ah there she is sun starting to peek out beautiful Alright, let's get back to the flight plan here. I finally turned on autopilot because my hands were getting tired. <laughs> and so I can focus on the arrival because we are joining an arrival. Actually, we are in it already. The hot rod to our nav arrival. Let me show you. So here's Navigraph. That's the chart. That's where we are at the moment. Past Colts. Interestingly enough, yeah, this is one of those arrivals that is perfect if you have vnav because you can see a lot of vertical restrictions here like here at bucken you should be in between flight level 240 to 270 so not below 240 and not above 270 so you should be in between that here you should be above flight level 200 here you should be in between 15,000 flight level 210 so all these vertical restrictions and if you have a proper vnav system it will find a way to plan your descent in such a way that you're descending at a constant rate so you're just descending for example at 1500 vertical uh, speed feet per minute and it will land you right smack in the middle of all those constraints and you land uh, you arrive at uh, 12,000 feet at hot rod or at the uh, model so yeah vnav would have been very nice but we don't have that yet so the closest thing we have for now is little nav map over here on my right side which is pretty nice because we have this flight plan elevation profile which does a very good job it also has top of descent 
and the top of descent is very accurate once you measure so you need to have like a, you need to measure your aircraft performance so you need to have like a an initial flight to so that little nav map knows what your plane is capable of and then it will measure those you'll save it and then it will be able to track the top of climb top of descent for you and it will be fairly accurate accurate enough so i use that every time and it's very useful and uh, i think it also takes into account the the vertical restrictions here if you zoom in yeah so top of descent is at uh, before bucken you can see at bucken it has those bars those are the vertical restrictions that we've seen in the chart in this one so you have to be in between that those two bars here at figure we have to be above yeah and here you have to be in between those bars again so the outside or how do you say outside those yellow zones if you look at it, at it that way so yeah if you look at the the descent that it planned for us we are basically going to do just right land smack in the middle of those if we follow it to the T which is very nice very helpful although it doesn't give you what descent rate you need to be at i think like it doesn't say feet per minute so like this one this line here from top of descent to bottom is steeper than the other ones so maybe i should descend earlier yeah i think i should start descending just to be on the safe side okay let's move that back Good. Start descending here. So I will put in 12,000 feet. That will take a while. So I'll use my hotkey here. 12,000. That is set. 12,000. And now we will VS at uh, 2,000 feet per minute. And then I will pull back on the throttle a bit. Just a bit. So we don't overspeed. And now we get the Boeing Banana, the range to altitude indicator right there, which is saying that we will be at 12,000 feet at that point, which seems a bit intense because we need to be at 12,000 feet right there at Hot Rod where my mouse is. So that might mean we are quite steep in our descent here. So I can probably shallow that down a bit. Like so. Or what I can also do is I can plan for each leg, for each restriction. Like here at Bucken, I need to be in between flight level 270 and 240. So I can plan that accordingly. But I think we're fine here. Yeah, like I, I can set 240 on the altitude. On the altitude selector here. Make sure that I am 240 past Bucken. So it looks like it. So I'm at 270 right now. I'll be 240 sometime after. And yeah, that looks fine. At fear, I need to be at flight level 200. So let's check. At this current descent rate. 200 above at figure yeah that looks good yeah i think it's this is a pretty good descent rate so i'll just keep it until 12,000, and i will continue monitoring the altitude so that we are not left hanging <laughs> and violating any of these restrictions but yeah pretty cool even though we don't have vnav we do have these third-party tools which help a lot so i'm happy anyway Oh, beautiful. That looks so good. Yeah, from the exterior, it's super smooth. I actually limited my FPS to 60 because I don't need anything more than that. And anything more would just be putting more strain on the GPU without really helping a lot. So 60 is something I'm more than happy with. So I use the Riva Tuner Statistics Server, RTSS. 
to limit my FPS to 60. But yeah, inside the cockpit, no chance of me going to 60. You can see all the stutters there. That's most likely because of the main thread and all the calculations here. I've set my glass panel refresh rate to medium and that helped with the FPS a bit but yeah we're still getting a lot here so I think let's see okay so we're at 45 48 FPS here if I lessen that to the minimum we're at 50 now yeah it does help we gained like what 5 FPS your MFD won't look as good but I mean you have all the details on your utilities if you're like me you have little nav map on the side or Navigraph or on a tablet then you don't need all that detail in the MFT and you'd rather convert that into FPS I guess all right so let's leave it be okay cool so I'll bring you guys back when we are closer we can probably do a, a bit of um, touring around the city because I think we will be pretty close to Detroit Detroit Metro is right at the heart of Detroit it looks like if I look at the map anyway I'll study it a bit Actually, a bit on the outskirts of Detroit looks like, but maybe we can fly there. We'll see, depending on the time. Okay, catch you guys in a bit. Now that, I think, is the thumbnail. <laughs> Winner. Oh, we're getting close, guys. We have now reached 12,000 feet. Now with local altimeter in here, 3024 and uh, that's the airport right there detroit metro it has how many runways one two three four five six physical runways that means 12 approaches whoa and suddenly what the heck was that something just kicked me over like the weather shifted or something interesting yeah, it looks like we will be actually going on a nice trip here. You can see the flight plan. The end of the arrival is the next waypoint, which is uh, modeled. That's how you read it. And the start of the approach, ILS-21 left approach, is a waypoint called um, Kobo. And that's a bit of a gap there. So Detroit is actually in here. And that one in the middle... That body of water is the Detroit River, it looks like. And what's interesting is, I never knew this, but apparently this island on the right is actually Canada already. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what Google Maps is saying. <laughs> or how I read it, at least. So that is... Uh, let's go out and see. So that one on the right that we're seeing is actually the city of Amherstburg. Does anyone know... Is anyone familiar with that? We also have a Delta airline there. 109 or 5. Beautiful view of the airport from here. Is this a handcrafted airport? Does anyone know? Never got to memorize those things. And lots of activities in the vicinity. Nice to see. Lots of airplanes. Lots of flights. And because this is real traffic, and that should be pretty close to how it is. I'm getting a bit of stutters here. I think things are loading in. So that island right there on our right, that one, is the, what do you call it, Bow Blanc Island. It is part of Canada, it looks like. So this is, this is the Detroit River. Actually, this entire thing. And that splits the US on the left, Canada on the right. Interesting, never knew that. It looks like that Delta flight is landing on that airport. Interesting. Good. Right. How are we on frame rate? Not very good, I imagine. 40 plus. Yeah, can't explain where it's coming from and then jumping from 30. But hopefully with the upcoming optimizations, that will become a different thing. Uh, and there we go with a kicking, sudden kicking again. Weird. Alright, so now we can do a bit of sightseeing. It's just uh, we can descend to 6,000 feet. 
because we are headed for Kobo now. Let's brief the approach. So at Kobo, we are required to stay at 6,000 feet. So let's put it 6,000 here. One second. VS it down to... Well, we'll see. Let's start with 1,000. I definitely need to slow down. Oh, looks like the Delta Airlines is actually landing at Detroit. But it's super low. It looks scary. Doesn't seem like it's following any of the published charts. <clears throat> okay. Alright, so if we descend at 1,000 feet, we'll be at 6,000 way back there. So that's going to be super late. That means we need to descend faster. So let's go 2,000 feet per minute here. Slow down, pull back on the throttle. There we go, that's more like it. So we're at 6,000 somewhere before we make the turn to Kobo. And that right there is Detroit on our left. Should be at least. Very nice to see all the street lights, the interstates. If anyone recognizes a landmark, let me know. Would be pretty interesting to see. Super cool. Ah, oh, dang it. I hate it <laughs> on air. Catches me again. Too much sightseeing. And anyway, the views are worth it. All the stutters are getting intense. So there's the Bell Isle below us, supposedly. That one. That's the Detroit River. That Bell Isle looks like it's part of the US based on the borders. Let me show you what I'm looking at. That one. So here you see that line. And then it says the United States and Canada. This is the Google Maps overlay for a little nav map. So we are technically in Canada right now. And as we cross through here, we will be in the US. Pretty cool. Nice. Right, we're turning to Kobo now. Oh, it looks like we have some landmarks in here from Detroit. You wanna know what that building is? I have no idea, but it looks like a big one. That guy looks like a mall or something. I've never been in Detroit, so you guys will have to tour me around. Speeds are doing good below. 250 knots, mandatory 210 knots at Kobo. Okay, let's keep 210. And we will continue this approach. It's nice to see all those planes in the vicinity. I'm not sure if it's slowing me down. Yeah, we're down to 37 FPS here. 39. So you can definitely feel the difference in frames, especially with track I are and all the moving around of the camera. We'll make it work. We will make it work. So, here's the approach chart for the ILS 21 left. Mm, Kobo is where our initial approach fix will be. Mandatory max 210 knots, actually. It's not mandatory, it's max 210. Okay, so we can keep this speed. Mandatory 6000. We do, we are at 6000. Make sure that we have correct altimeter. Good. And then. So, Kobo, Kali, we descend to 5,000 at Tigers, or Tigers, we're at 5,000, and we look at the vertical profile here, we continue descending step by step, 4,000 at Balas, 3,000 at Nesby, and 2,000 at Pukle, or Pukle, and then that's the final approach fix, where we will be intercepting the light slope at a three degree descent angle so pretty standard looking good missed altitude will be or missed approach will be climbing to a thousand one hundred feet then a climbing left turn to four thousand feet outbound on uh, the detroit vor radial one two two so that's this one the detroit vor you see that 122 
So we will intercept that. So we climb to 1,100 and then make a left turn. After we're at 1,100 feet, left turn, intercept radial 122 of the Detroit VOR, and then uh, continue and hold. Kage. 16 DME from the VOR, that's this one, and then we hold there. Okay, it's a standard right turn hold. Continue climbing hold to 4,000 feet. Okay, so 4,000 basically is the missed approach altitude. Good. That looks pretty straightforward. Minimums are 832 feet decision altitude. So let's set that up. Uh -huh. Minimums, let's say... Let's first, let's check the nav is properly set up. It didn't actually tune yet. Well, we'll test if that switches. It should switch automatically to 111.5 frequency so that it captures the glide slope. But here on Nav 2, what we can do is tune into the Detroit VOR 113.4, transfer that. What the heck is that plane? Look at how fast that's going. Oh, and then it's there. <laughs> Looks like a bug to me. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> Magic plane. Right, we are able to track the Detroit VOR 21 miles away. Yep, that looks correct. There's the airport right there. We'll be landing on the leftmost runway. That's 2 1 left. And it has a heading, should set heading of 216. I love the sound of the knob. 216 on the heading. It's going to be the final approach course. Man, that's a huge interstate. What is that? Does anyone know? Let's have a look at the map. Do a bit of sightseeing. Oh, that looks like the I-75. It looks like we are flying below, flying above the intersection. Huge interchange in I-75 and I-696. Where is it? There it is. Beautiful. Beautiful junction right there. Oh, that deserves a screenshot of it. Nice. Wow, I love the lights. Looks like there's someone approaching as well. Hopefully they are on a different approach than us. <clears throat> this is where a proper... ATC guidance will help but the cool thing is next time on our next episode we'll try to have VATSIM coverage in here because it looks to be an exciting thing departing from a class Bravo airport with all this activity man look at all the planes goodness and that's live traffic wow it does seem chaotic though doesn't it <laughs> seeing all these planes left and right I'm not sure if that's super accurate Good. Uh, we should actually have been descending already, but I've been missing my queue. So Robbie is at 5,000. We should have descended to 5,000 already. Sorry. Let's descend to 4,000 here. Okay. Robbie. After we cross Robbie, we can descend to 4,000, and we are... Yeah, we have crossed Robbie, we are on our way to Balas, where we stop at 4,000 feet. Should actually descend a bit faster than that. Let me turn on my inertial separator. Landing lights are on, although a bit late. On there already penalized me for that. Catch up to 4,000. You look at all those flies. My goodness. And yeah, my frame rate is getting hammered here. This is similar to Heathrow, I think. Very busy. Maybe even worse because we have this huge airport in front of you, all the planes, and the city right beside it. So all the objects you can load in. Let's turn off the overlay so that it's a bit more realistic. There we go. 4,000 feet. 
good. Crossing Balas. Now we can go to Nesby. 3,000 feet. Inertial separator is set. P is set down. Whoa, that's a bit quick. I think we can slow down the descent now. It might be time to get one notch of flaps in. Below 178 knots should be safe. Looking good there. Nesby at 3,000 feet. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's nice. The, uh, the rest altitude restrictions are actually noted properly in the in the MFD, in the flight plan, when I plugged it in. And now, it automatically tuned in Nav1 for the ILS. So we have ILS in here. Yeah, we see the glide slope in there. So later on, that should automatically switch to the ILS as well. We will see. Cool. Alright. Nesby. The next waypoint after Nesby is Pukul? Pukle? I'll call it Pukle. <laughs> Doesn't sound good. Which will be at 2,000 feet. And that will be the final approach fix. That's where we will be capturing the glide slope. I think I descended a bit earlier. That's fine. Man. All this activity. Is there actually an airplane on the runway? I hope not. Good. There we go. Oh, there we go. It actually switched automatically now. We are now on localizer 1 instead of FMS. Nice. Yeah, the avionics is improving bit by bit, guys. Man, look at the view here. We can actually see the city below now. And with a little bit of sunlight, that's really taking shape. Although, yeah, my FPS is getting hammered here. 32, 33. Yikes. Look at all that stuttering. Very scary stuff. Anyway, alright. I see the glide slope approaching. We're approaching 2,000 feet. Glide slope is coming down. So let's go and deploy landing gears here. Keep my hand there, as Steve Okinivo teaches, so that we have proper visibility waiting for our landing gear to fully extend. Waiting for those three greens. There we go. Landing gears are fully extended. And I forgot to arm the approach. Let's do that now. There we go, just in time. So now we slowly pull back on the throttle until we reach that uh, speed tape below 120 knots. There we go. Full flaps. Oh, I forgot to set the minimums. Minimums will be 832. Minimums, barrow, 832. Enter. All right. Nope. Oh, getting slow, getting slow. 85 knots is our approach speed. Let's make sure we keep that. I thought I hid the nameplates already. Nameplates are nice, but they're a bit not too realistic. Yeah, I think maybe there's a bug in the mod. You have to continue pressing F12. What's that plane doing though? Look at all those planes. Goodness. Alright, I think we can handle things from here. Autopilot off, your damper off. Let's do this, guys. Feet on the rudders. Winds are coming from the left. Looks like uh, four knots. A little bit of crosswind, but nothing fancy, nothing heavy. It's fine. 85 knots here. We're a bit low. There we go, we're catching up to the glide slope. Awesome. Ooh, beautiful plane above us. Right, continue our descent. Landing lights are on. Giphy. Gear is extended. Inertial separator is on. Flaps are full and your damper is off. We are ready to land. We are reaching the minimum soon as well. 500. 500. Two times. 500. Three times. <laughs> Guess there must be weird obstacles below. Buildings going up and down. Says we're low. Doesn't look like it, but fine. We'll follow the the puppy lights. Okay. There 
we are. Reaching minimums now. It does seem like we're high, but minimums continue. Yeah, I'll just keep this trajectory. And now it's become a tailwind. Look at that. I noticed that recently. Very weird behavior. The winds are fluctuating very weirdly. There we are. Moving to idle. And just flaring just a bit. Beautiful. Landing time log. Oh my goodness, that was Landed beautiful. Kilo Delta Tango Whiskey, Detroit Metro Wayne Co. Nice. Right, now where are we? I need the airport diagram. Should have loaded that in beforehand. Okay. Looks like we can turn right here at Whiskey 4. Here at the next upcoming green thing. Reversers just a bit. Nah, no, no, no need. We are pretty slow. So let's exit through here. Man, that was a beautiful landing. That doesn't happen very often, so I have to celebrate that. Oh, there's actually uh, an airliner right here in front of us. Stopping. Flaps up, heaters off. Going to taxi lights and we will wait for this guy. Not sure if he's planning to move though. I think he has a problem. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we'll have to be a bit creative. <laughs> Sorry about this, guys. Let's see. The airport diagram does look a bit different than how I see it. Yeah, it looks like it's a bit different. So instead, we'll just park here. The airport looks a bit different than what Navigraph is showing. I guess it's somehow outdated in the sim. So I'm assuming Navigraph has it the most up to date. Like if you look at this chart from Navigraph, I was expecting a taxiway here on the right side, but it was just grass. But yeah, we can park here. This can probably be a parking as well. Beautiful. Yeah, I'm liking the new sensitivity settings now. After getting used to them a bit, that minus 25% is really, I think, a good one once you get used to it. Okay, I think we can park here somewhere. I guess these are all parking areas. Yeah, a bit in the middle of nowhere, but at least we won't have to contend with the airliners. No idea how you park here, but... Let's just do it like that. <laughs> Alright, cool. Well, hope you guys enjoyed that flight. I sure did. Let's just clean up the plane here. Alright. Yeah, the frame rate is getting hammered. This is a good place to check for the frame rate once the update number 6 is out. is off turn off the panel lights as well engine off time logged perfect end of flight registered in on-air company now the score in on-air will not be perfect unfortunately so we yeah beacon and strobes were off landing lights were off so we didn't get the safety bonus, that's 5 or 10% I think, but still that was 127 XP and we earned quite a bit there. So I'll take that. That's still a positive overall. Good training for next time. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully next time we have VATSIM, but that was a good uh, hand flying moment. Good sightseeing as well. So we didn't have to focus so much on ATC comms. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day and catch you in the next episode. Clumsy flying guys and catch you in the next one. Bye-bye. See you soon.